Christmas Day to you. Welcome into First Take on this Friday Eve. Skip Bayless and Molly Karam here in studio. Stephen A. joins us from Philly. Gentlemen, how we doing? What's up? What's up? Good morning. How y'all doing? Good. I, I can't wait for one topic down the line on this show. <laughs> Porzingis is becoming the savior, the, the new superstar of the New York Knicks, and I can't wait to, to hear you bloviate about it. I have no comment. Yeah, at this I know. Time. Mm. We have no comment when we get to the topic. Plead the fifth. Yeah. All right, let's work, gentlemen. Cowboys defensive end Greg Hardy proclaimed his innocence on Twitter by changing his Twitter profile a brief time on Wednesday morning. Here it is. Quote, innocent until proven guilty. Lack of knowledge and information is just ignorance. The unjust treatment of different categories of people is discrimination he wrote this in the accounts bio now he's changed his bio and name again on twitter the change hardy made on his bio was addressed by jason garrett yesterday here's garrett on the hardy situation i think the biggest thing we try to do with any player is just address things when they come up and we dress them in-house and we deal with things uh, inside these walls and then we move forward skip mm. what should jerry jones do <sighs> Molly Stephen A. Smith, I've seen enough. As a lifelong Cowboy fan, I'm here to tell you it is time for Jerry Jones to cut Greg Hardy. And I'm talking about Stephen A. for the good of the locker room, for the good of the football team that I do root for. I don't root for Greg Hardy, but I do root for the Dallas Cowboys. And Greg Hardy has become more trouble than he is worth as a football player. He's, he's become an embarrassment and now a distraction for a football team that is obviously reeling toward the, the end of its season, potentially at Tampa Bay. Yet, I want to point out again, as I have to you, Stephen A., from the start, as a Cowboy fan, I said from the very beginning, no to Greg Hardy. Did not want him on my team from the start. Despicable human being, as we saw in the clips that we opened the show with. Convicted of domestic violence in a bench trial in North Carolina. That's all I needed to know. Enough is enough. But now I'm just talking about from a football perspective how Greg Hardy contributes or detracts from this, ability, this team's ability to win and lose football games. So now he's in, been involved in a very short day with the Dallas Cowboys in four different, let's just call them incidents. He has only four sacks. He's so far helped this team lose all four games in which he has played, 0-4 since he returned from his suspension that he served as a four-game suspension. So, Stephen A., I look at this and I say, remember the first interview he did? I, I was out of my mind about that, how remorseless he was, how insensitive he was. I said, I'm ashamed and embarrassed as a Cowboy fan. And then saw the clip again. We both went off about him barging into that special teams huddle. Like the idea of it, the, the sort of the motivation of it, as he rebuked his teammates for allowing the 100-yard kickoff team by you, your, your Giants but then he knocks the clipboard out of the coach's hands, and it's just it's another embarrassing incident. Then he goes on Twitter last weekend with a non-apology apology, apology that, that was just insulting to everybody's intelligence that he regrets what happens in North Carolina, what happened in North Carolina. And he, he dug his PR hole even deeper. Now, as Molly read, to this. I, I guess he's proclaiming his innocence now on Twitter. They took it down, but nobody in this team can control greg hardy clearly he's out of control in need of more anger management we saw from the the sideline huddle the special teams huddle and obviously jason garrett can't control him jason garrett's just a stepford coach to me who, who robotically continues to say we have dealt with this internally baloney we know who runs the operation jerry jones does do I think that Jerry Jones is loving the attention that Greg Hardy generates for a team that doesn't deserve any now as it's plummeted to two and six? Maybe he does. We know Showman Jerry, Barnum and Bailey Jerry, loves the attention sometimes more than winning. But in this case, for the sake of his football team, maybe galvanizing this football team, this locker room, reuniting a football team that can't be united with this distraction, this disgrace in the middle of its locker room as a quote-unquote leader of the team, according to Jerry and Jason Garrett, 
it's time to cut bait with Greg Hardy. Your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are, <clears throat> I agree with you. I said last week that they needed to cut him immediately in the aftermath of seeing those photos. There are a lot of people who lament the fact that it shouldn't take us seeing photos to draw that conclusion. They are absolutely right. It shouldn't take seeing those photos, seeing uh, Nicole Holder's allegations completely validated in the minds of most people with common sense uh, in this world. Greg Hardy looks like, the, like an, a complete villain. He looks vicious, and clearly what was exacted against Nicole Holder uh, is not to be disputed based on photos that we have seen. It's just that simple. And in the aftermath of all of that, when you see those photos and you imagine what this girl went through at that particular moment in time, the horrific situation that it was, uh, you know, how terrifying it must have been for her, you can't do anything but help have a level of sympathy and empathy to the extreme for her. And as a result of that, you look at Greg Hardy and you think he's a monster. You think that he's somebody that's completely out of control. Um, and it's just that simple. So if you're the Dallas Cowboys, you have to make that decision, not because of your football team, but on behalf of all women out there who have been abused, who have suffered from abuse, particularly when you're Jerry Jones and your daughter has worked vehemently in support of those who have been domestically abused. For, to sit there and to have Greg Hardy on your team, one would argue, is an insult uh, to the very daughter of Jerry Jones, by Jerry Jones himself. So that's something that he needs to consider, and that's why I think that you have to make the move that you have to make. But let me not sit up here and be a hypocrite. When Greg Hardy was first acquired by the Dallas, when uh, the 10-game suspension was handed down to him by Commissioner Roger Goodell, I was in complete support of him being a member of the Cowboys simply because I felt it was low risk, high reward. Here's a situation where he certainly can't afford to do anything like that again. He was handed the 10-game suspension, which all of us deemed acceptable. Combined with that 10-game suspension, you were going to have a situation where he was going to be on a check-to-check, week-to-week basis with the Dallas Cowboys, so it was simply low risk. And obviously, we'll talk about it later on in the show, how rooting for a team, for a play, or for a team doesn't necessarily mean that you're rooting for a player. We'll debate that issue a little bit later, Skip Bayless. But in the, in the, rea in, in the grand scheme of things, what he did was reprehensible. But I think we need to focus, we need to reel things in and get down to what this really is all about. Greg Hardy hasn't suffered enough in the eyes of a lot of people. It really comes down to that. Had he been suspended for 10 games, okay, then we would have sat there and said, okay, he's got 10-game suspension. Had he been suspended for the season, had he spent about six months in jail, then we wouldn't be saying this. We would consider him a deplorable, reprehensible human being, but we would move on from there. The real problem that everybody's having here is that he missed all but one game of last year, but was still paid $13.1 million. He got suspended 10 games, but then that was reduced to four games. He's still in a position to collect a vast chunk of the $11.3 million he has the potential to earn with the Dallas Cowboys while being a member of the Cowboys this season. So we see a guy didn't serve a day in jail, didn't get punished by the legal system, had his record completely expunged last week, still got paid millions last year for not playing, still getting paid millions this year for losing, while, by the way, bringing bad publicity to the very franchise that you're supposed to represent. So when we look at it from that perspective, clearly people are going to have a problem with it because in our society, what you want is a healthy level of contrition that was earned by having to pay and, and deal with the ramifications of your actions. We see an individual that hasn't had to deal with any ramifications, so we have a problem with him there. And then he doesn't help the situation because he's clearly he's clearly has a screw loose a screw loose. He's not himself. And as a result, you hear from the things that he says. You know, when he came out with his first interview, guns blazing, talking about Tom Brady, then his wife, then his wife's sister, then talking about how, you know, going to going into the huddle and smacking down the coach's clipboard and getting in the face of his teammates. Then after that, sending a Twitter or uh, a tweet out there proclaiming his innocence when clearly he looks guilty as sin. So when you look at all of these things, Skip Bayless, you might call him a despicable human being. I would say this to you. The only reason I stop short of that in any capacity is because I think this dude has a problem. 
I mean, he, I, 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 I think that what he did to Nicole Holder, what we believe he did to Nicole Holder, I think he'd do it to anybody. This ain't a Ray Rice situation to me where you got Ray Rice and he's getting into an issue with his then fiance, now wife, and what have you. And then he's forced to deal with the ramifications of his action. And after that, well, you know what? Uh, 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 contrition kicks in. And he's so sorry for everything that he's done. And he's trying to make amends for it and rehabilitate himself and his life. I'm looking at a Greg Hardy. I really believe he doesn't realize what he's done. This brother's got a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen to, look at Charles Barkley's letter, you know, letter to, to, to the masses via the Bleacher Report last year, or, or yesterday, rather. I read the entire uh, letter on my radio show. Why? Because Charles Barkley, I didn't agree with everything that he said. Please don't get me wrong. I didn't agree with everything that he says. But I did agree with what he said when he says, this guy needs help. This is a different kind of cat here. Something is wrong with Greg Hardy. Other people just, they're despicable and they're just trying to get away with stuff. And that's just what they want to do to people. Greg Hardy, to me, seems to be somebody who has no control, who has no control. And I, I, I think everybody needs to be worried about somebody like him because he seems that much of a loose cannon. Something is wrong with this dude. If, I'm talking about the guy that you see on, a lot, on the sidelines and you see those photos. You tell me what do you see that's different. Mm. You tell me what you see. I don't see deception. I don't see manipulation. I see somebody who appears to need help. Okay, we, we know all that you talked about in the past. I'm going to restate my position to you. I, I didn't want him in the first yep. place. I, I didn't, the pictures changed zero for me. I, I just needed her testimony mm. that I read back in the bench trial. That was enough. Despicable, out, shouldn't be back on my Dallas Cowboys. But as you also concur with me on, he was eligible to be signed. He paid his price to the NFL. I didn't like the price. But let's. I didn't like you, the you price take either. issue with the Players Association because they got it reduced from 10 to well, 4. Well, listen, right? listen, listen. Well, I they did. Of course, I can technically, theoretically, no, I can take theoretic. issue with the well, players. Well, you should. Well, you just should. Well, allow, me to, allow me to explain. Allow me to explain. Because this is serious business here. Of course, we take issue with it, but they're a union, and unions mm -hmm. have an obligation to protect the members of its union. We don't like it, and I agree with Shannon Sharp. Too many times we put pressure on the leagues. How come we won't amp up the pressure on our justice system? You have a situation where Greg Hardy is able to get off, okay, doesn't but, serve a but, day but of he time. Did. He Nothing. did. He got he got off because of a, what I think is a sort of a quirky North Carolina law, a sure. loophole to, that allows but, you to appeal for a jury trial. And then, as we all know, just to restate this for those who don't know, she failed to cooperate when it came time for the jury trial, and the authority said it appears that she has been paid off by Greg Hardy. So that was the end I of it. He is exonerated. No, He's off the hook. No, no, no. I understand that. We've explained that on several occasions, Skip. But the big, you brought up the Players Association. And I'm bringing up the fact that more of an onus is on the leagues than it is on the justice system. Mm -hmm. If you're a Players Association, I don't like it. You don't like it. We mm -hmm. don't think it's right. Okay. We think All it's right. despicable. But when you have a justice system, a, a murderer can walk into court, Skip. He is obligated to have okay. legal representation. Right, if he can't it. provide it, the court will provide it for him. All How right. are we going to turn around and point to the union okay. when the justice system does the same All thing? Right. Well, How I are we going like to do that? The, I didn't like the 10 games, and I didn't like it reduced to four. I said at least one year, Neither and it should have stood as one year. But now, to, to my point, I'm talking about as a fan of a football team that is reeling. Now I'm just on a football level. He has to go because Charlotte Jones Anderson said from the start, I'm on board because we have programs in place to rehabilitate. I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing a guy they right. cannot control. We, we know he has anger management issues. He had him in Carolina. It's part and parcel as to why he's one of the best pass rushers in pro football. But to the point of the Eagles on uh, in, in Sunday night, 
they're all saying he seemed out of it. I, I think it's getting to him mentally. All the distractions, what, all the pressure. He's 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 losing it, and they can't control him from losing it. Why didn't they exactly? Why didn't they prep him for the first interview he did? Why didn't the PR staff say, "Hey, maybe you should think about being a little remorseful here, and be careful what you say. You know, be watch, mind your p's and q's well, here, because you could step in it." And he stepped all over it. Okay, and then why wouldn't you shut down his Twitter account? Yes, thank why, you, why Skip. Wouldn't you, why, why wouldn't you just tell him, hey, Greg, it's not real wise right now to have that kind of an outlet to the world because you might get emotional some night, you might go a little over the edge, and you might hit send, and he did it twice. He hit send twice, and it makes him look even worse than he does, which is pretty hard to do. So I'm just saying that's a team problem. If the team can't control him, you've got to cut bait for the sake of your team. Trust me. Jason Witten and Tony Romo in the locker room, you think they love having Greg Hardy in there? I say no. I say it would bring the team back together if Jerry Jones would finally admit that he was wrong, swallow his pride, forget about all the attention that Greg Hardy is generating for his lousy Cowboys, and say, I've seen enough, we've got to go forward. He's more trouble than he's worth. End of story. Well. Well, again, well, evidently, it's not the end of the story because there's more to go. He needs to go. I said that last week. You said that before he even got there. We agree. The problem is he's still there. And the thing that you highlighted, Skip, this dude doesn't see it. He doesn't see it. You know, how, who, how, who are we to say that the Dallas Cowboys didn't prep him? Who are we to say that they didn't talk no, to him? I, I doubt he it. He doesn't seem they to seem be listening to anybody. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, listen, a lot of people seem afraid of him. Yep. But when his teammates went and talked to him, who was he listening to then? This dude seems loose. Yeah. He seems like he's got some big, big time problems. But for the purposes of public consumption, it's important to highlight the fact that you have people out there in our society. If you pay a price for your transgressions, people are usually very forgiving. Ray Rice ain't playing because Ray Rice ran average 3.1 yards a carry in his last year that we saw him and only rushed for 660 yards that season and didn't seem to be great that, that to begin with when he ended up leaving the game. That's why he hasn't been back. Sure. But in terms of his level of contrition, and how sorry he appears to be. There is no question he has made a concerted, if not a valiant effort, to resurrect his, his career and his life. Greg Hardy walks around looking at us like, what the hell y'all are talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Ain't nothing yep. happened. Nothing happened. He will sit there with the, in the aftermath of the photos, Skip, Molly, and literally will look at you. That's what he did on Twitter. Yeah, he's hey, in hey, denial. He's about? delusional. In innocent. It, it, exactly. So I'm, I'm like, what does that tell you? You got to get rid of him, but he's got to pay a price. And in the meantime, he's got to get some help because he ain't he ain't right. I, I'm just I'm just I don't know. I'm no psychologist or anything like that. I'm just projecting. I'm just speculating. He, he's not right. Something wrong with this boy. Something, something really, really wrong. Agreed. We all agree. He needs to be off the Cowboys. He needs to be off Twitter and he needs to get help.